All right, so welcome back. Um, we're only going to be doing um, this one and one more after this, so we're coming to the end of our journey through um, basic mathematical statistics. Uh, today, what I'd like to talk about is um, a bit of an overview of regression. So um, I will try to at least throw in um, one kind of computation of something, some details, but for the most part, we're going to be uh, just giving an overview of um, of the of the subject. So, what's the basic plot? So the idea is that we have a pair of random variables, and um, we're imagining so let's say random variables. Let's say x and y, and we are interested in understanding the relationship between them, but in particular the predictive power of one um, with respect to the other one. So that is to say, the basic question is, um, given x, um, what do we know about y? Well, I mean, really, we've uh, kind of done this in some sense already. This is really just um, conditional probability. Um, but um, you know, so the the kind of the first, the kind of um, first statement about it is that you know this is this has to do with the um, with the conditional um, density, um, which I'll write um, as f of y given x. So this is um, you know, something that one sees before in probability. Um, but we're going to um, instead of just um, you know saying that that's the end of that's the end of it all. Um, what we will also be interested in, in particular, is describing. Um, so we we'll want to describe um, the expected value of of uh, of y um, conditioned. On x equals x, but also as a function of x. So we want to understand, like, as you know, given information about x, if x equals you know some value, some other value, how does the varying of x influence the expected value of y? So that is the 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 primary target of this. Um, uh, this topic, which is regression, is to understand um, the conditional mean. So this is really just what I mean as the expected value of y, given that x has some particular value. You know, if we're talking about things given by uh, densities, say continuous densities, then this is the um, this um, this expectation right here. Um, and this 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 expression, so an expression of this quantity, um, the mean value as a function of the value of x, um, is a um, regression equation. And so basically, this is um, so you can say this is kind of like. Um, Kind of part one of the story, right? So part one um, is to understand this expected value. You know, of course, if you're given some particular, you know, analytic exact form of a joint distribution, then you can just uh, calculate this, and it's um, maybe a reasonable thing to do that to get a feeling for what these things uh, feel like. I'm not going to do that right now. Part two. So part two um, is the topic of linear regression. And that is um, a, a very useful, um, perhaps simplifying assumption or maybe simplification is that um, this um, expected value of y conditioned on x is a linear function of x. I mean, now, it may or may not be a linear function of x, 
but it's a it's a reasonable simplifying assumption, and it's um, it's kind of a, and it's a it's a powerful and useful one. So um, so you know, i.e., let's you know imagine that this has the form alpha plus beta x, um, and then um, the the question that naturally arises is how do we determine um, alpha and beta? And so this is really where, in some sense, the rest of the story, um, so there are, I think, five parts. I didn't uh, count closely beforehand. There are roughly five parts to the story, and each part we're going to say something about what we can know about these alpha and beta um, and, and how well this kind of approximation kind of works. Um, so, um, yeah, so this is, so this is the question. How do you, how do you determine alpha and beta? Well, it, it turns out that, you know, in, in some sense, if you have, um, nice, exp uh, you know, your, if you have a nice expression, um, for the, for the joint density, then you can see that you can derive alpha and beta by using um, just kind of um, standard, um, basically moments of the of your of your function. So um, we can express. So under this assumption that that um, that we actually have this kind of linear relationship, then we can express um, alpha and beta in terms of the uh, mean value of x, the mean value of y, the variance of x, the variance of y, and the uh, covariance of x and y. So um, remember the, the covariance is the expected value of the difference um, between um, x and its mean times y and its mean uh, it's the expected value of that product. And there are some useful identities with all of these that, um, that, um, that we'll, we'll use in just a second. But So the, the one thing that I'm going to do now is I'd actually like to say, um, just, just by hand, how we actually can come up with this um, expression. So uh, with an expression of alpha and beta in terms of these, these numbers. So, um, so that's what we're going to do. So we'll do a digression. to express alpha and beta in terms of these these things. Okay, so it's um it's basically what's what's the trick? There's a there's a trick. Of course, there's always a trick. So the trick is we're going to take this assumed linear uh, relationship alpha plus beta x and we're going to um let's uh, let um let g of x be the um, marginal density for x. So in other words, um, g of x is what happens if you take a joint um, density, I'll call it f of x comma y, and you integrate out the y. Okay, so that's the, um, the marginal density. So the trick is we take this and we um, multiply by g of x and integrate dx, or we multiply by um, x g of x and we integrate dx. And we'll do that. We'll get a couple of different equations, um, and then by just examining the terms, we will achieve victory. So let's let's go ahead and be victorious. Okay. So uh, first, I'll multiply um, by g of x, by the marginal uh, density. So this, um, g of x. Um, so that's equal to um, alpha g of x plus um, beta x um, g of x. Um, so uh, we should, um, you know, uh, remember um, yeah, the, so the expected value, we, we should just remember what, the, what these things are, right? So, the, so this thing right here, 
um, the expected value of y given x, that's the, so the expected value of y given x, so this is times the, um, the conditional probability distribution, uh, and then dy, that's, that's really what that, what that number is um, right here. This is, this is how, we, how we actually get it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to multiply it by x, and then we're going to integrate um, dx. So if, we, so if we do that, then what do we get? We got integral of y, f of y restricted to x. x is like a constant with respect to this integral with y, and so it goes on the inside. I can just stick my g of x here. Um, and then I have a dx dy. I need another integral sign. Okay, so this is my left-hand side, and that's going to be equal to alpha integral g of x dx plus um, beta integral x g of x dx. Okay, uh, integral of g of x, that's an easy one. It's 1. It's a probability density, right? And, um, and let's see, over here, if I look at f of y restricted to x times g of x, well, that's actually just the... Um, the uh, the um, joint uh, density function, f of x, y. And so this whole thing on the left is actually the expected value of y. So this is um, expected value of y, which you know we could just call it the mu sub y. Okay. Uh, and now the only other thing that we have to sort out is this thing over here. Well, um, this integral, um, x, g of x, dx, well, g of x itself is the integral over um, over all y values of the joint density function, right? So this is the integral x integral of f of x comma y dy dx. But again, you know, um, x is just a constant with respect to that um, dy integral, and so I can stick that inside, and I get f of x times f of x y dx dy, and that's the um, expected value of x. Um, which we'll write as um, mean x. Um, and so what do we get all together? We got the expression um, that um, the uh, expected value of y is alpha plus beta um, expected value of x. So that's what we get from, um, from this uh, left-hand side here, multiplying that through and doing the integral. Let's do the same thing now with um, with the uh, with this other um, term x g of x. Okay, so let me bring my expression down here. I'll multiply both sides by. Um, oh, <laughs> this was the expression with the g of x. I just need to additionally multiply some x's inside this thing. I brought the wrong expression down, but that's okay. I already had an x there, so okay. So that's x, x squared, right? So, um, so what I'm doing is I'm taking uh, this expression here. I'm multiplying both sides by x g of x. Previously, I had multiplied by g of x, so I'm just sticking another x in. I get that, and now I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to x and y. Um, so again, this on the on the left, we have the double integral. This mu is, um, you know, as we wrote before, this is the um, integral of y, f, blah, blah, blah. so this is x, y, f of y given x, uh, g of x, dx. That's what I have on the left. Uh, so I'm, uh, and then, so I'm, I'm integrating with respect to, um, well, I should have a dy as well. So I'm integrating both sides with respect to x, but this thing was also an, already an integral with respect to y, and I just combined those integrals, just like we did last time. And then over here, I have alpha integral x g of x dx plus um, beta integral x squared g of x dx. Um, you know, this integral we actually did just a moment ago. It was right here, and as we did before, we were able to take this g of x part, um, rewrite it, and have a double integral of x f of x. And so we do the same thing. So this is really the double integral of x f of x y dx dy. 
um, beta and just in the same way the integral of x squared f of xy um, dx dy. Okay, and so what do we get there? Um, just as before again, this is the joint uh, density right there. It's really a definition of how the what the conditional density is. This is how um, really this how this symbol was defined in fact previously to have this identity be true. Um, okay, but in any case, so what do we get on the left? We got the expected value of x times y, and that's equal to alpha times the expected value of x um, plus beta times the expected value of x squared. Okay. Right. Now, um, okay, so now we can um, simplify this a bit. Um, so by rewriting things in terms of the um, of the uh, of the variance and covariance. So so this of course is also what we're calling mu x. The um, expected value of um, the expected value of x squared is the um, is the variance plus the square of the mean, and the expected value of a product um, by a similar identity is the um, the covariance. Um, plus the uh, product of the mean. So remember the covariance, I think I defined it up here, didn't I? Yes, I actually did define the covariance. It's this thing. If you work out just that, um, if you work, if you multiply that through and use the linearity of expectation, then you'll, you'll find this identity. Okay. All right, so, um, so what do we have? This gives us uh, one particular identity. We got um, the covariance mu x mu y plus uh, equals alpha mu x plus um, beta sigma x squared plus beta mu x squared. And then of course remember we also had the equation um, mu y is alpha plus beta mu x if I remember. Is that what we had? From the left hand side, yes. We got this equation, mu y is alpha plus beta mu x. Okay, um, and so um, so then um, what do we do? Well, you can, for example, um, just um, plug this in uh, right over here, and we got, um, well, I just have to do this once. We'll see what we got. We got uh, mu x, um, let me just kind of multiply through. We got alpha mu x, um, plus um, beta mu x squared, and that is alpha mu x plus beta mu um, sigma x squared, also beta mu x squared. Okay, and like um, miracle, um, these guys cancel. Um, these guys cancel. And we're simply left with um, sigma xy is beta sigma x squared. And so that tells us that beta is sigma xy over sigma x squared. All right, so we got an expression for beta, the slope of our line um, in, in these terms. And then we can substitute that back in here and get an expression for alpha, which then reads that alpha is, um, is this beta times mu x um, minus, uh, wait, alpha is, wait, oh, whoops. Alpha is mu, uh, is mu y minus that, I guess, sorry. Mu y minus that, so I'm just, um, I'm just going ahead and solving my equation there um, using that expression for, for beta. Um, and so then we get our, our final expression, which is that mu y um, um, given x, so this is alpha plus beta y, um, sorry, alpha plus beta x, alpha being this particular thing, mu x minus sigma x y over sigma x squared mu x, 
um, plus um, beta, which is the same thing, sigma x squared um, times x. So we get this particular expression, which we could have, I guess, written a bit simpler um, by writing it like this. So this is um, mu y um, plus sigma, uh, the covariance x y, the variance of x times x minus mu x. And this is, you know, one standard way of writing your regression equation um, assuming this kind of linear form. So what we've shown, so we just showed that if mu y uh, given x is a um, linear um, function of x, then it is this linear function. Okay. So, um, so what does that tell us then? So this is all, I mean, we haven't done any statistics yet. This is all just kind of probability right now. Um, but now we can, we can say, well, if somebody actually gives us some, like, some samples, some data points, some values of X and Y, then how can we guess what alpha and beta are? And, well, there are, um, the, there's, so the, the natural um, guess is that if we're given some samples, which we think of as some XIs and YIs, then um, via um, the method of moments, I mean, these, these sigmas and mu's are really moments um, a bivariate moment for this um, for this covariance, but um, but these are basically moments. Um, then you know, given our our samples, we all we really want are to use kind of just the the kind of normal estimators that we have for these um, for these means and these variances and the covariance and this mean there, and um, and then we'll have a good guess for these numbers alpha and beta. So, um, so, the, so the, the procedure is then we, um, via mo method of moments, we, um, we can use these um, point estimates. Um, let's call them S X squared. Well, we have the means and I'll call it S X Y for um, for um, sigma X squared mu X mu Y and sigma X Y um, to get estimates for this um, for this form alpha and beta. So in other words. E.g., um, we would guess, given our given our samples, that beta would be approximately. So we know that it's equal to um, sigma x y over sigma x um, squared. Right. Um, that's we um, showed over here. That's the actual value. But these sigmas might be unknown um, parameters, which we find out via sampling, and so we say that we we can use the point estimate of SXY over SX squared. Okay. So this is, uh, and similarly for alpha. Okay. So this is kind of the, um, the, the kind of, you know, first step where we're actually using some statistics. So, um, so, you know, kind of um, part two, this linear regression thing, we, we ask, like, how do we come up with, like, a reasonable guess for alpha and beta, a reasonable equation? Um, and the, there is one suggested by the, um, by the method of moments. Okay, step three. Now, I'm, so I'm going to do progressively less details now as we go, because so that took a little while. 
But so, step three. Um, so, the perspective for step three is we're going to um, forget about randomness entirely. Okay, so this is called um, least squares. Okay, so the um, so here we consider the following problem, which is given a bunch of pairs, um, let's say little x i and little y i, which maybe are actually results of sampling from our experiment, but we'll just suppose there are some fixed things that are given to us. We want to find an equation for a line, let's say y equals alpha plus beta x, such that the kind of um, sum of the squares of the errors of my predictions for the y's is as small as possible, such that if I look at the sum of the difference between the yi and what this linear function would have um, guessed my yi should be, sum of the squares of the differences, that this is minimized. You know, so we want to find alpha and beta that makes that thing minimum. Um, and the, um, so how do you do that? You use some calculus and you just do it, right? So, so do some calculus. And what do we get? Well, we get the same answer. <laughs> so that's the kind of funny part, right? So what you get is, um, is that, um, for example, um, beta should be s um, x y over s x squared. Um, so I, I guess just to just to clarify these, what I'm, um, yeah, um, should I be calling these by that name because you know maybe yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that actually confuses it with um, here. Let me call it instead of s x squared. I'll call it s x x. Just to, um, I haven't defined it yet. Let me just define it now. What what are these? So these are the, um, yeah. So the so um, so where um, s x y is you take the sum of the products of x minus the uh, x i's minus the sample mean y i's minus the sample mean of y s x x uh, one nth of that and this is one nth of the sum of x i minus x bar um, squared um, yeah the, I mean the point is I'm just using one over n instead of one, one over n minus one it's not a um, these aren't um, these aren't really like um, um, these aren't unbiased oper um, these aren't unbiased estimators um, but uh, these are the estimators that we used in the method of moments. Okay, so let's let's just move along. Not that it actually matters because they they actually canceled in this expression. So I guess I could have used either one, right? Okay. Anyways, sorry. Um, the point is, you get the same answer as you got with our point estimates before, which is um, which is which is pretty cool. Okay. So in other words, you know, at, at the end of the day, you get that y is equal to kind of the mean of y plus um, s uh, or you know this is the uh, this is your approximation um, s x y over s x x um, x minus x bar so here you know where what, what we really mean is you know where we have this these collections of points where pretend we're kind of Using them formally as if they were random variables, and writing these um, these same expressions that we've had for these um, for these various statistics. And that, that's what you got. Okay. So that's kind of a that's I don't know if these are steps. These aren't really steps. This is a part, right? This is part three of the story. Okay. Our little wandering story through uh, through regression. Well, it's pretty clear that this is taking longer than I had imagined. There are two more parts left, but I think they're going to have to wait um, till the next uh, video. 
So, um, but just as a little um, sneak preview, part four is going to be about um, normal uh, regression analysis and part five correlation analysis. The basic idea of normal regression analysis is we assume that um, that for any given value of x, the val the um, y is a normally distributed variable. The conditional density is, is normal. And in uh, correlation analysis, we're going to assume that we actually have a bivariate normal distribution. The, uh, but there's a, also a, a basic philosophical difference between uh, these ideas, which are that in, um, in um, regression analysis, one takes the, um, the observations, the, the, I should say, the, the things that we are assuming are the um, independent variable, the x's, the things that are supposed to predict the y's, we take those as um, as fixed, uh, as given. These are not, we don't consider these as random variables in, in regression analysis. Uh, we think about them maybe as like artifacts of the experiment themselves. These are conditions, these are describing like where we're looking, so to speak, and the y's that we end up getting relating to those x's as our second coordinate of our observation, those we think of as the random variables, these things determined by x. So. Um, as opposed to in correlation analysis, where we think of the whole thing as some bivariate distribution that we sample as, as pairs from. So, um, yeah, so, uh, so that'll be uh, for, for next time. The, um, I guess the other important thing is that we want to go from just estimating these parameters alpha and beta to um, with points to interval estimates. And so if we make these kind of increased assumptions about what our um, distributions look like, like the fact that we're normally distributed and things like that, then we'll be able to actually give some interval estimates, um, at least um, uh, following those assumptions, which, um, which will contain some really, you know, uh, useful additional information. All right, so until next time.